We will have two lectures here tonight. Uh, for the first one, we are very excited to have Jean-Pierre Vicolo here in Vienna. His lecture is called Our Wishes. His contribution to the conundrum of imagination um, is a film installation also called Our Wishes. It is on display at Leopold Museum if you would like to see it or maybe you already saw it. And yeah, thanks for being here. Welcome, Jean-Pierre Vicolo. In this specific case, we decide to make a TV series on, let's say, the treaty, the story of the treaty, the first encounter between the chiefs of Cameroon, what I used to call Cameroon's River, because of the shrimps, uh, and uh, the German merchants. So, because Bismarck was trying to get a colony before the Berlin Conference. So, um, that first encounter obviously is being told obviously on a Cameroon perspective, um, because I could see clearly that some of the topic we're still dealing with today are actually embedded in what happened during the first encounter. For example, you'll have the, 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 the whole deal of debt, the debt or the deal of um, uh, devaluation of currency, or even corruption. Uh, and this is 1884, 83, uh, we talk about this. So the question is why fiction to tell that story? Um, obviously, uh, I would say um, uh, documentary would have been very hard unless we go through a lot of reconstitution, reconstitutions. But the whole idea of fiction, because fiction comes from kind of invention, meaning not true. Fake or whatever it is, uh, and I like that, that idea of using fiction to kind of tell history. Also, because cinema itself is also uh, an invention, uh, but we're dealing with a continent that was invented, uh, and I can mention Valentin Mudimbe's book, uh, "The Invention of Africa," uh, and Valentin Mudimbe. Uh, I'll show you a clip of one of his, uh, the film I did on him. It's a four hour film that was at Berlin two years ago. It's called Les Choses et les mots de Moudimbe. So, dealing with the two inventions, first one being cinema itself as a device, uh, or the fictional genre, and dealing with Africa as an invention, it's actually the idea of reinventing Africa because it was invented, if you can put it that way making the story before the Berlin Conference. And now we are dealing in a space um, where there's a lot of interest, a lot of conflicts, uh, and uh, a lot of, let's say, debate and discussions uh, for what will become later a nation, if you can call it that way, called Cameroon. So um, the whole concept of our wishes is based the text that was ignored uh, by uh, uh, the German merchants and all the, those who came to sign the treaty uh, because the Cameroonian chiefs had a list of their own wills would, and, and nobody took care of those wills and that document was put on the side. And I thought it was important symbolically to mention the fact that despite whatever happened, uh, they had a kind of a vision of how they saw that kind of relationship between this German coming to take over the country and them. Uh, so uh, I would say one of the main issues would be uh, why would I use fiction to do this? Why would I prefer to, do, to use fiction? Obviously, I can imagine in Cameroon, we try to reach the masses because, again, history is not being taught, let's say, the proper way uh, in schools. Uh, actually, at least this history is not being taught. And also, the fact that um, I had a text. I was very lucky to meet, that I met 10 years ago, this German lady living in Cameroon, who learned French in Cameroon. She arrived in Cameroon in 69 and had also the opportunity to be able to read Gothic German. And she was a 
able to dig into the archives and to kind of come up with this. But because she was an engineer and she had nothing to do with cinema, I think she was just playing and trying to do something for herself because now she had like Cameroonian grandchildren and she was feeling like we need to kind of find heroes for them so that they don't just, just watch all these comic books or American heroes on television. From that moment, she was able to kind of dig in history and come up with one of the draft of the script with a lot of references, you know, uh, with all the, she could read, and not just the archives, but some of the books, uh, one of the consul notes. So there's a real a, a reality element to it. Uh, even if I still consider it a, a, an invention, because uh, once you go from the document you read, the process of going from the document you read from the archives to the actually uh, uh, the film, or TV scene where two people are interacting with so much detail of the emotions, obviously we need event invention in the, in the process. So um, I don't want to argue that it's real or it's close to reality, because on the top of that script, we had to also ourselves invent few things. Um, for example, in the story, the whole story, there were no women, for example, playing any role. So we start questioning all these things and obviously we had to kind of assume that there was some interaction or some uh, input of a uh, very strong woman in, 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 in the story. So cinema or television also, and that's one of my, my new kind of thing, I think uh, uh, beyond, of, beyond the entertainment dimension, beyond the, the document or the intellectual educational dimension. I think um, uh, we can also use cinema for, uh, and I think it's Fred Winstar who's articulating it very well. Uh, he just wrote a book called Afrotopia. Uh, it's actually about reconstructing our psychic, psychiatric, I don't know how to say it in English, infrastructure, meaning colonialism uh, was violent and it has actually created a lot of uh, I would say um, uh, damages, you know, where people are ashamed of themselves, ashamed of where they come from, uh, and they kind of have a very negative idea of uh, their continent. And all this is sometimes a design, and sometimes it happened through violence. Now, the whole idea is how do we reverse this? I always take this example where in Africa you have so many people who don't or who feel embarrassed or ashamed to wear their own hair. And this is not just in Africa, in America, but you can see that as a real phenomenon where hair, for example, black hair is still an issue where um, many women are kind of, I don't want to say obliged, but buying all this Brazilian hair or whatever. You know, hair. So I just think it's very important to, to, to acknowledge where we are right now and maybe to look at cinema and here, television, as a medium to be able to address that, those damages and uh, to see why, how we can gain back some of, um, this, uh, some of this pride or whatever is necessary to just not be uh, uh, carrying through all these years uh, some of these feelings. Uh, Franz Fanon also uh, said something. Um, uh, he said that the encounter between the West and Africa kind of made Africans sick. Uh, I always prefer to say that he made both sick, except that um, it doesn't seem so and we don't seem to be healing both parties in a way. And I think uh, if we now decide to make films or to do, to, to, to tell stories, to be more specific, I think we need to kind of at some point, not ignore some of these uh, historical uh, elements. And the idea is that cinema is actually an interesting medium uh, because it could actually do these things. Uh, I always like to take the example of children, why children like uh, action heroes. And children like action heroes because children are weak. Uh, so because they're weak, they kind of compensate their weakness watching somebody who's very strong. Uh, and I think that's just one of the very basic elements you can use 
use how we, we kind of respond to cinema. And cinema has been kind of hijacked by the business. And actually there's a very interesting case that happened uh, in America, um, I don't remember, I think it's 1902 or 5, where actually cinema was, was being discussed uh, for what it is, what, what it should be. Uh, and I think it was actually, that's where the decision that cinema would be purely business was made. So I think as a medium, obviously, we, we have stopped kind of exploring it, except in very experimental circle and not in popular kind of context, like what are we trying to do now in Cameroon, showing this uh, historical film for, to the masses. So in the, the idea of just pursuing kind of commercial gain or um, uh, uh, I would say uh, celebrity, whatever it is, and forgetting uh, the very nature uh, of, of, of the medium. So going back to how cinema could then address this whole colonial issue at a popular level, uh, I, I think it was very important to kind of make sure we follow one principle. Uh, in general, they tell you that you should make movies for an audience, and for me, it was very clear that I had to make this movie from a place. And I think making a movie from a place changes a lot of things. Uh, obviously, uh, I was in Cameroon, and here I'm telling the story of the first encounter of being in Cameroon, uh, knowing that obviously the knowledge of history is uh, almost uh, is, uh, not there, and also knowing that the history or history is always told on the perspective of the winners. And in Cameroon, we had many winners in many ways. Uh, first, this is a country that was colonized, colonized by the German, and then after the war, it was split in two, with the British and then the French. And then um, the liberation movement lost again. So we had two regimes, I mean one regime with two presidents, and still that kind of idea of being able to tell all these different stories is crippled and almost impossible just because always the winners are the ones telling the stories. So uh, even if this one is not very sensitive because no witness of that moment is alive, even if the families are there and are very, I would say, aggressive in making sure that they played an important role in the whole process, I think it's important to kind of uh, see how um, the idea of being there in Cameroon uh, with everything that it entails, actually, there's a philosopher I like a lot, a lot Fabien Boussiboulaga. He's actually called it, I don't know in English, but it's like art topic. The topic being like um, whatever you, uh, is being said from that place where you are, and how do we engage from that place. So the space is very important. He's actually one of the most important philosophers, I think, on the continent who never left home and who's still living in Cameroon right now. So I think uh, that perspective was very important to be able to kind of uh, to do this. And the idea of having this exhibition here in Vienna uh, being showcased in the space where people will experience the TV series uh, it was very important. It was not about just bringing what they call content, a term I don't like much, so to people all over the world, but to actually make sure that that content is actually being uh, shown in a specific space, uh, uh, but that is the space that he called, that reminds them the perspective, the context where people, of the people that film was made for, and also of the people who are going to be watching it. And that's what is displayed at the Leopold Museum, so that we have um, a space where you kind of, we are in a Cameroon home, Cameroon house, uh, uh, it's a typical one, I hope. Uh, and then, Obviously, we try to put also another space where the colonial space with the colonial objects mixed with traditional objects, because that's how it happened. You know, when colonial objects start coming through trade, people will obviously mill them, mix them with the traditional objects. Uh, and it became like, for us, who came later, some of the traditional and the colonial became kind of, uh, not the same thing, but it was like associated. Uh, and the last part was mainly dedicated to the process of invention. How do we create through fiction a uh, uh, story we didn't witness and nobody knows exactly um, what happened. So uh, maybe what I would do is just to kind of uh, um, share with you one, 
because how I, I moved from that fiction, um, even science fiction, because actually uh, I discovered a few years ago that I was the first African to make a science fiction film, so I didn't know. So, uh, but we did one fiction last year, a science fiction that year. But yeah, I'll show you just a few clips of how do you go from that, you know, to now this kind of new context of, um, uh, let's say, historical, you know, go from what's the future from from the future to the past. Um, uh, let's see, let me start that. Now, I'll just show you the some of this uh, fictional, you know, uh, science fiction element uh, to show how they are not very different actually from uh, that whole process. So this is called Naked Reality. It's, just, it's a film I did last year. Uh, uh, Studied 120 years from now uh, in Africa. Thank you. 